Hi, and welcome to the explanation for the uh, U12 IPT uh, Multimedia Systems Assessment Task. So here's the assessment task. It's been shared with you through, um, through Google Drive. Um, this is just the explanation for it. Um, you'll need to do everything in this uh, document here. So a couple of things we can see at the top. We've got a link to the video explanation, so you can click that and um, go back to this video if you ever need to. Um, over here, we have a suggested timeline. So this is not the only way to do it, but it is a suggested timeline to show you um, how much time you should be spending on tasks. Uh, and we can see that through there as well. We have the um, assessment task cover sheet. Uh, put your name, you've got my name, uh, coordinate, etc. Put the outcomes down here. Uh, and signature down here as well. So description of the task is a uh, charity has contacted your company looking to update their website. They are looking for something engaging and modern, allowing them to inform interested people about their mission and work and driving donations, enabling the charity to continue its work. You are to choose a charity and develop a website that fills all of the criteria in the overview. You are to ensure that you use media from all the media types, text, images, audio, video animation, and hypertext. Um, copyright is a major concern when developing any system, particularly so with a multimedia system. You are only permitted to use the logo and colors of the charity for the purposes of this assessment. You will need to prefer, you'll need to prove you have the right to use all other media according to copyright legislation, either through producing it yourself or through asking for permission from the copyright holder. All work will either be completed in or linked to this document. So here, you are able to uh, take the logo and the colors of the charity uh, without asking anyone, okay? That's not a problem. However, everything else that you do, any pictures, any movies, any audio, whatever, you need to prove that you have the right to use it. And so that can either be through producing it yourself and then proving to me that you've done that through um, a range of methods, screenshots, etc., cetera, or uh, by um, taking it from someone else but ensuring that you have the right to access it. So you need to show that you have the right to use that, um, that media through taking screenshots of licenses and then attributing the author in the correct way. Um, through asking for permission through email or other means and providing evidence of that. Um, if you do not show that you can use media, uh, sorry, if you do not show that you have the right to use media, then it will not be considered for marking purposes. Okay, so here's the instructions on how to link in this assignment. So if you've got something you want to, um, to put in the assignment uh, and it's not um, part of the assignment, so it's not a screenshot or something, um, you need to upload to Google Drive. So upload to Google Drive, um, and then right click on the file um, and go to the sharing menu. So you can either do that in the document by clicking share up here or in Google Drive by right clicking and clicking share. Uh, and this box down here will appear. You need to click on get shareable link and that will do two things. It will make the file accessible to anyone who has that link and it will also copy the link to the place on your computer um, where command C goes. So when you normally copy something, it just automatically copies the link to that spot. Um, this box will appear saying that link's got been copied and then you just highlight the, um, sorry, then you just paste the link into your document, highlight that link and then um, press the link button to make it a clickable link. And that will automatically put a link to it in your uh, Google document. Moving on, the first task you have to do is a project diary. Um, so what you'll be able to, what you'll be required to do is you'll need to do a blog post per week on the progress of your project, and every week you must show progress, as the idea is that you work on the project steadily. Um, please paste a link below for each blog post you make. Ensure your teacher has access to your blog when posting. So every week you're going to make a blog post, um, and you're going to talk about um, everything happening with your project. We can see here to get an A. Uh, you need to extensively detail the progress of your project every week. Use screenshots, graphics, and annotations to illustrate your ideas, issues, and work on the project. All blog posts are posted in the week that they are related to. So it's important that you actually show um, you show progress and that you post in the week that the progress is related to. If we don't post in the week we're related to, then we can see here that some blog posts are posted in the week. Maximum I can get is a six. If I don't post any, uh, some blog posts here, we get a three. If I don't post any in the right week, I can only get a two. So it doesn't matter if you've got really, really good, um, really good blog posts. If you don't post them in the week they're related to, you get a two. All right. So you really need to ensure that you're working on this project every week and you're blogging on this project every week and that I can access those blog posts and you paste the links here. Okay, Gantt chart. So we need to make a Gantt chart. We can see here we're doing the Gantt chart in the first week. 
So Gantt chart is in one of these three styles. You can see to get an A, we need to do this style where we take every task in the assignment and we break all the tasks into subtasks. Okay. Um, and that's outlined here. So every task needs to be divided into subtasks um, apart from question tasks. All right. So if we go down to something like this, this is obviously a question. There's no other subtask related to that. So I'm happy for you not to um, not to break that one up into subtasks. But things like the Gantt chart, where it's not a simple question, you do actually have to produce something. You'll need to split that up into subtasks. Moving on, we've got understanding the problem, which is also done in the first week. Um, for this, you need to look at all the information you've been provided in the session task, provide an analysis of the situation, and as part of that analysis, identify the target audience and the needs of the client. To get an A, you're providing a detailed analysis of the design situation, and you're identifying correctly and in detail the target audience and the needs of the client. There's nothing in here that talks about the solution you're going to provide. All you're talking about is what the client requires. Down here, planning the solution, we can see also that that is in the uh, third week, uh, sorry, yeah, the first week of the assignment. Um, so you'll need to uh, propose in detail a solution to meet the client's needs, uh, which you outlined earlier in understanding the problem. And to get an A, you're extensively proposing solutions that meet the needs of the client outlined in understanding the problem. Uh, again, that's another question one, so you don't need to include that in your Gantt chart as a subtask. Storyboard. There are four different types of storyboards which we'll cover in class. We have linear, hierarchical, nonlinear, or hybrid. Your uh, job in this section is to choose one of those and then using those methods, demonstrate the layout and structure of your website. Um, your storyboard must be hand-drawn. How it, um, Scan and take photos of it and place them below. So what I'm requiring is that each page is hand-drawn. However, you can uh, join them together online and you can annotate them online using a tool such as uh, loose charts or using something like uh, even presentation, so PowerPoint or something. Um, you need to show all the relevant details of each page, including the fonts, sizes, colors, and styles of elements and navigation. Uh, so, and the storyboard is hand drawn. So, you can draw what the page will look like by hand, and then you can annotate the font sizes, colors, and styles, and you can draw the arrows to represent the navigation on the computer. Okay, if you wish. It's up to you. Um, so, that's there. Use of media. So you'll need to use a large amount of media. Okay, it's really important, um, especially in a multimedia task, that you do um, use a lot of media. So after you've drawn the storyboard, you need to start creating the media you're going to use for your website. Um, in this section, you'll outline the media you've used and provide evidence you have the right to use it by either gaining permission or through creating it yourself. Evidence can include screenshots of emails to rights holders, copies of license terms, screenshots of you creating media. Failing to do this will mean that your media will not be marked. Add new rows to the table for every piece of media that you create or use. So in here, you'll list the media that you have made or that you have found uh, that you're going to use. You give it a name. If it doesn't have a name, you just give it one. Okay, make it so make it descriptive so that I know straight away uh, what media you're talking about. And then describe it here. So tell me what the type is. It's text, audio, image, video, um, whatever. Um, but also give me a brief description so that from these two I'll know exactly what it is. And here, provide your evidence. This may not be one piece of evidence. This may be multiple pieces of evidence for each thing. But you need to provide enough evidence for each uh, media so that I am able to determine that either A, you made it, or B, you have the rights to use it. All right. And you can see here to get an A in this section, um, it's worth 10, so it's quite a large amount. Um, you need to use a large range of media. Uh, media is of a high quality and appropriate for the project's topic and target audience. Media content must be appropriate for a school project. And you create at least one high quality piece of media for each media type. So you need to create a high quality piece of text media, high quality piece of audio media, image media, video media. Okay. The most important part is this bit here. All right. So proof supplied of adherence to copyright laws through either obtaining the correct permission to use content and adhering to conditions of use or through creating content and presenting evidence of this process. Any media not used legally will not be considered for marking purposes. So you can make 20 pieces of media, but if you don't prove to me that you can use it legally, then I will not consider it for marking purposes, which means I'm not looking at it and you will get zero for this section. So it's really important that you um, acknowledge all your sources or you prove to me that you made it, um, and then I'll mark it. 
Okay, ethical considerations. So you also need to look at the ethical considerations of your media use. So you'll need to choose two pieces of media for which there are ethical considerations around their use. And then for each, assess the ethical implications of using this piece of media, recommend the use of this piece of media, and then justify your recommendation. They can be completed here. These are three very high level verbs. And so you'll need to write quite a bit for each of these. Okay. I will not be surprised if this, oh, definitely this is going to go onto the second page. Okay, those boxes are pretty small and you haven't got much room in the page. So I wouldn't be surprised if these two boxes, when they're filled, actually take up a whole page by themselves. Um, so you need to make sure you do that. Um, this does not need to be split into subtasks because you would generally probably do this all in one hit. Um, and it's a question. But you need to make sure you take your time on this because this, this can be quite a detailed answer. Website coding. All right, so here we're looking at your coding and you need to ensure that you create your website using HTML. Um, you can use Dreamweaver if you wish. Um, you need to ensure that all links work correctly. Structure your code appropriately using indents and comments. If using pre-made templates, ensure that you have the correct permissions to use these. Paste a link to your website below. So here, what you need to do is you need to ensure uh, you need to make your website. So you make it using HTML, um, and then you need to um, ensure you do all the things for A. So we're looking at our code is well structured. Uh, with great use of indents, uh, you have a high level of comment use. So you need to ensure that when you write your code, you uh, use comments a lot so that I know that you understand the code and so it's easy for you to maintain it later on. You're going to be using tag pairs and you're going to be nesting them correctly. So this is things like if you make a image that is clickable, you're going to be using the A tag first, then the image tag, and then you're going to close the image tag and close the A tag. So that way, the innermost tag is closed before the outermost tag is closed. Okay. You need to ensure your code is W3C compliant. You're going to go to the W3C website, upload your website to there, and then it will tell you all the issues you have, uh, all the issues you have, and then you can go and fix those. Eventually, when you have no issues, they'll give you a link to a um, an image that you can embed in your website. Um, it will be quite easy to find that image and then just put it on your website anyway without your code being compliant. Um, I'll know if you do that. I'm going to check all the websites anyway. So please don't do that. Um, otherwise, I'll figure it out. Pretty simple. Uh, you need to ensure all links and embedded media work correctly and any pre-made template used is correctly used under terms of license. So if you take a CSS pre-made template from somewhere, then you need to make sure you use it according to the license that goes with it. Um, that might mean attributing the author or you know, asking for permission, etc. Okay, peer review. So every section, sorry, every person in the class will mark the assess, will mark each and every assessment out of 10. And the criteria is here. Um, so you must be here on the day to mark everyone else's assignments. We can see here for this section, you will get zero if you don't submit your project, if your media content is inappropriate, uh, if the student did not mark according to the marking criteria. So if you don't mark according to this marking criteria, um, I will take your mark out of everyone else's um, averages, so you won't, your marks won't affect them anyway, and I'll actually give you zero. <clears throat> so what that means is, if an assignment is really bad, but the guy happens to be a mate, you say, oh, he's my mate, I'll give him 10, then obviously that's not uh, marking according to the criteria, and I'll give you zero for it. Um, the other might, the other option might be, if the assignment's really good, but you don't like the kid, uh, and you decide, oh, I'll give him two, um, then obviously the assignment's worth more than that, and so I will um, take marks off you instead. And the last section down here, we've got student did not mark all projects in class apart from their own. So you need to ensure that you are here on the day to mark the projects, and you need to ensure that you mark every project, okay? Um, so you need to ensure you've got time to do all that. So really, really important for that as well. Testing, um, you need to ensure that you test your website. Some examples are here, so you can test the links work, test the media works, test the media loads in an acceptable time frame, and test the website works on a variety of browsers and platforms. There are other tests you can run, you don't just have to run these, uh, and you need, to you need to provide evidence for your test, whether they pass or fail in the notes, so any explanatory notes you wanna write. For an A, you need to use a large range of appropriate tests to test the function of the website you need to provide appropriate evidence for tests and explanatory notes where required. Okay, so the evidence could be things like screenshots. Um, it could be things like a screencast of your of you running the tests. 
Um, and if you do a screencast, if you could split it up for one screencast per test, that'd be really good. Um, it could be other sorts of evidence too. It's up to you how you provide it, as long as I have enough evidence to see that you've actually run these tests. Evaluation. We evaluate your solution. All right. So in terms of whether you've met the needs of the problem. So you need to go back and look at the understanding of the problem and then check that everything in there you have completed. Obviously, to get a five here, you need to evaluate in detail whether the solution meets the client's needs or not, highlights both positive and negative points. So I need to sit there and talk about how your assignment's awesome because every time you do a project, there's always some negative points to look at as well. Okay. The last thing you need to do for the assignment is the justification of documentation choices. So you need to actually extensively justify um, your use of the project diary and then justify your choice of Gantt chart, whether it's the A Gantt chart, the C Gantt chart or the E Gantt chart, and you can bold the one you chose um, and then tell me why you chose it uh, and how it's appropriate to the project. And then similarly for the storyboard, you can bold the one that you chose and then tell me why you chose it and why it's the most appropriate to the project. That's pretty much it. So just looking at the timeline though, we can see that we're doing the Gantt chart, understanding the problem, planning the solution and the first blog post in the first week. Okay, because all those sections are kind of small. A storyboard can be quite large and complex. So we're doing that in the second week and we're going to do blog two. Media creation will take a long time. So I'm saying that it should probably take about four weeks to do. Okay. Um, you'll also be completing the use of media section there. Um, as you make the media, it makes sense to then fill out the table. Um, you'll be making a blog post every week explaining what you're doing throughout these weeks. Uh, and the ethical considerations are also important, but you'll complete those at the end um, when you've made all the media. Then the next three weeks, you'll be coding your website. Okay, once you've got the media, coding the website should be simple. So three weeks there. Uh, and again, three blog posts. Okay, during the first week of the holidays, you'll be testing and you'll be completing blog post 10. And then in the second week of the holidays, you'll be justifying your documentation choices and your evaluation blog post 11. The last thing you'll be doing here is your marking of the project. So your assignment is due on the Tuesday of the last week, sorry, Tuesday of the first week back of term two. And what I need you to do before you hand up that assignment is you mark the project. So say on the Sunday or the Saturday before it's due, your assignment should be completely finished, okay? And I want you to go through the marking criteria, which is at the bottom or in the individual sections. And I want you to go through and mark each and every section as a teacher would. So don't be, don't sit there and go, oh yeah, my assignment's awesome, I'll give myself a 10. Be completely honest and say, yeah, you know what, in this section, I deserve a five. As you go through that, make notes on what you need to improve and then go fix it. Okay, there should be no reason why you don't think you've given your sorry, you don't think you should get full marks for each of these because everyone in the class is capable of getting full marks. If you're not getting full marks by the end, you haven't given your best effort, and so you need to fix that. Okay, really, really, really important. Um, if you don't think you're going to be able to get full marks and you don't know why, um, email me, come and see me, and we can have a chat about that. That's basically it. If you've got any questions, email me, come and see me. Um, and we can sort those out. Otherwise, good luck.